working with Andres on all cool uh, cool startups we have. Um, but like Felina's talk made me wonder if like Excel is already programmed, it can get even worse. It got like s s all of a sudden something, someone starts to build something on JavaScript, which would be <laughs> like really annoying. Um, but uh, then I found out you're on the schedule and yeah. want to talk about JavaScript yeah. and one big event loop. So uh, I think you don't need any further introduction. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, Moi, uh, Finland. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, Node on Fire, which is a uh, web framework uh, built by me. So who am I? Um, I guess uh, in my earlier career I, I worked, or actually I played uh, Tibia, which is a uh, 2D uh, massive multiplayer online role-playing game. Um, and I wasn't programming back then. I actually found out that there is an open source project uh, duplicating the, the game world of, of, uh, of Tibia in uh, C++. And that's actually how I started uh, programming, because I wanted to build my own uh, game world, obviously. Super cool. Uh, then I started working at uh, Papersake back in uh, 2007, I think right before um, the iPhone got introduced here in, uh, in the Netherlands. And that's actually where I started uh, getting contact with uh, with Nupentunel, Ilse Media back then, Sanema. Uh, so I created the first uh, Nupentunel iPhone app uh, when I worked at uh, Paperzaken and did a lot of stuff in uh, Objective C. Uh, then I worked for PVH, a whole different company. They sell uh, uh, clothing, uh, mostly jeans. Uh, so they have uh, Tommy Hilfiger and Calvin Klein, and I worked on the setting up the mobile uh, development team there. And now I am a developer at the Sanama lab. So at the lab, we, uh, we create experiments um, and, and we want to uh, validate assumptions. And that's how we try to, well, to build new businesses, really. Uh, and we, we try through the uh, lean methodology um, so we try to optimize for value and we try to reduce waste, really. Um, and how I like to say it is, we try to deliver as fast as possible with the, with the least amount of, of resources. Um, so at some point we, we have our assumptions and um, we, we create a landing page, for instance, to test the value proposition. And so we try to, to not really create big uh, products and, and spent well two million uh, on it before we really know if we, if, if users really want the product uh, so we try to come up with the assumptions and try to validate those um, but at some point we do need to create smaller pro products um, to test the our assumptions and and that still takes time and that's something uh, I want to solve uh, and that's why I started Node on Fire earlier this year. Uh, so I want to be able to create web apps uh, in a matter of days instead of weeks or, or even months. Uh, let me just give a quick overview of Node on Fire. Uh, so this is a little uh, buzzword lingo, but it's a, well, a database everywhere web framework to rapidly create the web apps following the 12 factor methodology. So the 12-factor methodology, I, I think it's really um, uh, a nice set of rules to keep you from finding the balance uh, between the, the, well, really putting something together quickly or making something which is technically awesome. I think every, every developer always is challenged with, well, spending a lot of time on, on getting something uh, built really nicely of just uh, getting that task uh, posted to the done uh, board. Uh, so the 12 factors, uh, is tw 12 rules. The first one is really trivial. Uh, and it says, well, your code base should be uh, in a revision control system. Uh, the second one is you should declare your dependencies as explicitly. So think about Bower for your front end dependencies. Or in uh, Node.js, uh, you, you should declare your stuff in a package of JSON, uh, which retrieves the modules from NPM. Uh, your config should be stored in the environment, um, so uh, your API keys and your credentials. 
so they should never be stored in, in your source code, obviously. Uh, backing services should be treated as attached resources. So that's a database, for instance. So you, you declare a database URL in your config environment and you connect to your database by looking up the, the database URL in your config. You should separate the build release and the run stages. So in the, in the build stage, you transform your code to a build. In the release stage, you release the build. And in the run stage, you, you run the release. Uh, your processes should be stateless, so you shouldn't actually store any state in your process itself, but you store it in a um, resource like a database or in memory, key values or Lacredius or whatever you want. Uh, there are a couple of more rules uh, I don't want to highlight now, uh, but they, yeah, those rules really help you to try to find a natural balance between getting something done really quickly and and uh, creating something technically awesome. So back to Node on Fire. Uh, Node on Fire is created from a, a couple of components. Uh, the first one is uh, Node.js. So that's um, uh, the awesome JavaScript, the event-driven uh, platform backed by the V8 runtime. Uh, then there's AngularJS, which is a superheroic front-end framework by Google. Uh, PostgreSQL is the backing data store, and um, RabbitMQ is the uh, AMQP uh, implementation for the message queuing between web and worker processes. Um, and one, one uh, nice thing about Node on Fire as well is that it allows for easy deployments on uh, Heroku or Doku or other Heroku-like platforms, uh, and also because of the 12-factor uh, methodology. Uh, one thing I want to show you actually is the, the database everywhere concept it's, it's using. So I prepared a small um, demo. Yeah. Uh, so this is a, um, a project I built just right before the presentation in Node on Fire, uh, really quickly. It's a copy of Hacker News. So you sign up or you sign in if you have an account. You can sip, submit a, uh, an article uh, and all other users vote. And it uh, increases the vote. Here, you can see this number uh, going up. Which one? Oh, uh, yeah. <coughs> well, um, yeah, so I, I just want to show you the code which is used to actually create this app. Um, and as you can see soon, it's uh, very little. So uh, over here in the list, um, I have an Angular controller, uh, which is this guy here. Um, and as you can see, well, here is the, the injection. The article model gets injected by AngularJS. Um, and here, I hope everyone can see it. Better. Okay, I hope it stores that state. Um, so over here on the article model, you can uh, run a find method uh, which returns a uh, promise, which resolves to an array of, of articles, or it rejects and it uh, alerts an error, right? Um, and the only thing I had to write here was just the, um, the article model here, just this piece. And the nice thing about Node on Fire is that I can uh, simply um, run a script to generate an API. So it's doing, it's reading all the models, um, and then it's creating an HTTP API for you to be able to do all your basic uh, CRUD actions. So you create, read, update, and delete things. Um, and it can delete, uh, generate in the build stage a uh, client-side script for you to use. So it uses the, the automatically generated API uh, to do your CRUD actions on the client side <coughs> directly. So I'll, let me just run them here. So they were generated um, and you have them available here. So as you can see here, this is generated um, uh, an automatic API of the article model again. Uh, and it allows this 
well, generates code to create an article, to retrieve a list of articles, to relieve, uh, retrieve a specific article, uh, and to update an article. Uh, and that's all with just these lines of code. Uh, the next nice thing is, well, obviously, if you, you have your models, you at some point you need to add SQL uh, if you need more performance. Um, I think everyone who uses an ORM at some point figures needs the, the power of the raw SQL or just to be able to do something a bit more uh, uh, advanced. Um, and Node on Fire introduces the concept of property types. Uh, and you can see, see a nice property type over here. So here it creates a, um, a virtual property, which is a SQL statement, which you can inject in the, uh, which automatically gets injected in the select uh, query it's doing. So you can just create a, uh, a formula to, to get a, the same position of the article. So it's uh, based on the number of votes and uh, um, doing a calculation based on the, on the creation time of, uh, of the article. Uh, one thing what is really nice is that you don't have to, so at some point you have systems which uh, allow you to generate APIs and things like that, but as soon as you need to do something a bit more advanced, you actually need to uh, do create your API and create, make changes to, to that client side script which was generated. And here you can very easily still uh, inject SQL stuff which won't be available directly on the client side, side but you can still invoke it. Um, another nice thing is the migration. Uh, <coughs> so over here I have a user model so what I can do here is I can give uh, the user an age property, right? Oh. Um, one nice thing uh, Node on Fire is doing that I can actually uh, generate migrations now uh, for this change. So I can run the build script, which is, well, defined in my grunt file. Uh, it can build the migrations. And what it's actually doing, sorry, I'll just show you. It created a new migration file. So I'll show you that migration file now. Here it's saying add to user and it noticed that it had added a property age to the user. And um, how it's doing that is that in one module, um, it's loading all the models from the models folder over here, where you see my mouse. And then it's loading another models module, uh, but then based on all the migrations, then it's comparing the two and it notices, hey, you added an age property and it generates that. Then obviously you can execute the migrations. You just release it and as you can see here, I hope it's visible, yeah, to the left uh, window, you can see that it added a column age. Um, and as you can see here, it actually keeps track of all the migrations where you're at. Um, the nice thing is that you can store this in your Git or in uh, HG or whatever you want. Um, and of course, you can roll back as well. And now it's back to, uh, to migration one. It dropped the, 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 the age column here. And it's doing that by, for every migration, it's creating an up method and it's creating a down method. So here it's actually applying in the up method the, the, uh, the the properties and he, here it's rolling back all the property values. Um, and lastly, I want to show you actually how easy it is to pass messages from your web process to uh, worker processes. Say we want to um, send a, a welcome mail when a user signs up, right? Um, so the best thing to do is we, uh, we actually uh, go to our user model and then here uh, in the after create hook uh, we want to send a message to one of our worker processes the process should actually send the uh, send the mail for us uh, and it's trivial to do in uh, a node on fire so over here we 
I created a, uh, a, a small uh, worker. So it's a test worker, which has a send mail method. And here it actually sends the mail. Uh, in the uh, process file, I have declared a, uh, a test worker, um, which runs. And uh, in the user model, th so this is in the state of the web process. If you invoke a message um, on the worker, a method, I should say, then it transparently sends a message to your broker. So in this case, RabbitMQ. Um, and the, the worker is automatically listening to these messages. Um, and it then sends a mail to the new user. Um, so that is that. Node on Fire is open source. Uh, so I invite you to fork it or at least try it out on a, a rainy Saturday and uh, help me improve it. Thank you. Questions? And please repeat the question. Yeah. Yeah, so the question was why not just use Django, right? Yeah, well obviously it's in a different language, right? Uh, I think the, the nice thing about Node on Fire um, is that you can reuse a lot of your um, backend code with your client side code. And I think as soon as you, you don't have a clear distinction between the two sites, um, you are able to much quicker iterate on, on getting uh, products out much faster. And that's the key, of course, here. It's, no, it's not necessarily to build massive products. No, it, it's to uh, build MVPs to quickly validate assumptions. Another question. Ron, you're a language purist, so. Okay, uh, so the question is, is if there are any uh, limitation in the SQL implementation uh, in this uh, JavaScript library? Um, well, I think, uh, not that I know of right now, I think most of the SQL stuff you're injecting uh, goes directly to the uh, uh, PostgreSQL driver, uh, so it's not doing much there. Well, the only limitation there is, is that there is still an ORM which by definition creates limitations on, on, a, on a whole system compared to SQL. Uh, but still you, you can change uh, some queries or inject some SQL. So I think in practice, yeah, there are some, some uh, downsides to it. Final question before we break for beer. So hurry up. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the question is uh, why generating code instead of just having a module actually executing the code, right? I think at some point if, um, things can get really uh, complex um, if you c keep adding modules on modules who, who do different things. Uh, and I notice, and that's actually the nice thing about actually generating code, that it can do things much simpler uh, um, uh, which makes it just more maintainable, I think. Okay. Other questions uh, for uh, beer? So uh, please okay. give a round of applause for uh, Martijn. Thank you.